So aimless, my fear with sin I wouldn't let my dear Savior in Then Jesus came like a stranger in the night Praise the Lord, I saw the light I saw the light, I saw the light No more darkness, no more night Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside Praise the Lord, I saw the light Just like a blind man I wandered along I saw the light, no more darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy, cause I know inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I was a fool to wander and stray. Straight is the gate and narrow the way. Good morning. Nobody's seen on TV that they're supposed to be having an election next month or so. Have y'all seen that anywhere? Been kind of quiet. Just a couple of signs in the yards and what have you. It's interesting. Uh, I was a history teacher, which meant I taught about civics and all those other kind of things, and, and uh, I, I don't know everything about it, but I know some basics, and I'm still learning a bunch. If you're a teacher, you, you seem like you're always learning, but one of the things I heard well put the other day was, we're a republic and not a democracy. Did you know that? I pledge you to the flag and to the republic for which it stands, and, and, and the difference between the two. And you say, what does that have to do with a Sunday morning ser sermon? A, a lot. <laughs> Okay, a, a lot. I, I, you, you probably heard, I don't tell you who to vote for and who not to, but I will tell you values. I'll tell you biblical values. If they're Daryl's values, they mean nothing to you. Okay? But if they're biblical values, they should mean to everything to everyone. Would you agree with that? Because what is our founding document when it comes to a document? Anybody know? As a Christian, what's our founding document? The Bible. The Bible. What, what else comes close? Nothing. nothing. Right? We, we talked about that this morning. 2 Timothy 3.16 All Scripture is God-breathed, inspired by God. No matter who He wrote it through, it's all there. And, and so it's the, the ultimate truth. Well, the difference between a democracy and a republic is this. A democracy, everybody votes on everything. Is that what happens now? How many of y'all see things happening you didn't vote for? <laughs> or against? You didn't get that opportunity. Okay, That's a democracy. The problem with the democracy is most of them failed quickly. You know why they failed quickly? Public opinion changes quickly. Any of us, us ever change our minds? And, and so when they sat in that, that hot room in, in uh, Philadelphia years ago and argued and fussed and George Washington, who was over it before there was a president, uh, but he was over it, and, and uh, he said he wished he'd never been associated with the writing of a document to found the nation. 
they messed up on the first one. They tried a, a document to start off with. It's called the Articles of Confederation. We were, they were going to run it without a president. They didn't want any leader telling them what to do. They had a king, didn't like that a bit. They knew they didn't want a monarchy. They didn't want a dictatorship. They didn't want all those other kind of things. And they tried to figure out, so they researched. And they found out democracies fail. But they found one that endures much longer. And the difference between a democracy and a republic is this. There's a founding document that is not easily changed, like the momentary desires of the people. And as long as you keep coming back to that, you keep the structure in place to keep the nation going. Okay? And what's the founding document of the nation? Do we know? Well, it should be the Bible, that's, but that's of the Christian kingdom. But of the nation. It's the Constitution. Now, it was done by people who followed the general terms of the Judeo-Christian. I love that. That's Old Testament, New Testament. <laughs> Right? But, but absolutely on that. But it, it, it came from a lot of research. A lot of research done to, to find that. Madison and others, Jefferson and all this, intense research to find out which one would last longest. I think it was Ben Franklin they went to. He was the old dude at the, at the meeting. He said, uh, what y'all got? What y'all come out with? You know, at the end. He said, uh, well, sir, you have a republic if you can keep it. What is the republic? When they tear up the document, it's funny, everybody goes into government, they have to swear allegiance to protect the Constitution, etc. Right? They have to do that. Now, it's typically not what happens, but when the document's done, it's no longer that nation. You have to start over with something else. And so that's what that is, is a document. Well, let me ask you about now. Let's, let's move on from that. If you, you know the difference between a republic and a democracy. One's based on the initial founding document. The other's based on the will of the people at any given moment. Democracy, any given moment, and then there's the Constitution. And by the way, they wouldn't vote for that Constitution, but they had certain rights called the Bill of Rights. Like, don't mess with the church. I'm sorry, freedom of expression, but it's in there. And the right to bear arms because they didn't want the government to take over. And, and, and you can't search and seize without this. And they named all of those things, those first ten. Okay? So there were assurances for the people before the people would even vote for them. They didn't want the government to control them. Okay? Now if we kind of ask more, what can the government do for me? And it will give up control in exchange for those things. So it's kind of scary what goes on. But that's, that's what's going on. Well, what happens to churches when we do away with the founding document? What happens to churches when we do away with the founding document? Well, we, well I, I like this part. I really don't like this part, especially when it's upside down. Let me flip it over. Okay? What, what's, what's the most... What happens when you do that? What, what, when you treat it like the old Piccadilly? Huh? It, it's no longer the same document, is it? Right? It, it, it no longer does those things. And so, this morning I wanted to talk about, initially when I started looking at it, it says, I was going to look at truth. Well, the, there's a lot of talk about truth in the Bible. In fact, the whole Bible is truth. How many believe that? Okay, we say we did. What's the first thing they teach you when you get school in science? What do they teach you when you get school in science? Did God create the heaven and the earth? Huh? All kind of stuff. Big bang. Whatever theory they come up with, and then they call it science. What's the problem with the term science? It can change. It does, doesn't it? How many remember when Pluto was a planet? And, I, and I'm being silly with all that, but science changes because it's based on man. And then we take theories and we make them truth and we teach them as truth. Right? It's not absolute because you can change it later, but we teach it as absolute truth. And so science is fickle because it comes from people who are exploring and trying to figure it out. And that's why they still call it the Big Bang what? Theory. Theory. The creation what? Theory. The evolution. What? Theory. theory. What does theory mean? It's just a guess. It's not proved. It's not proved. Okay? And so to believe a theory that can't be proved, you have to step into the realm of what? Faith. Faith. Well, we can't believe the Bible because it's not proved. Well, it's pretty well documented <laughs> for thousands of years. Right? 
How many of you have had a personal experience with the Lord? If you're saved, that meant the Bible, that the, the Holy Spirit came and told you, now's the time. <laughs> Woke you up. Like the song said, I saw the light. And how many can think of, uh, of answered prayers that could be not be explained except by God stepping in and doing things? And uh, probably most of those were very private. You know, so you have lots of evidence of it, but we don't call it a theory. And, but we do believe it by what? By faith. So when we get into calling things fact by faith, we've left science, which if you look at the scientific message, you, you, you follow an experiment, and it's repeatable. You can do it again if you put all the same stuff into it. Well, is the creation thing repeatable in science? Is evolution repeatable? It hasn't been done, so it's still a what? Theory, so we believe it by faith. We, we've taken that and we, we, we built our stuff around. Is this repeatable? I mean, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is your Lord and believe in your heart sincerely that God raised Him from the dead, will you be saved too or is it just the ones you already have? Oh. Well, the Bible says all who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. A couple verses down. You read it here. Good job. Right? One of those in every class. Somebody knows all the answers every time. <laughs> Great stuff. All right. So, we come to a place and we have to ask this. What is truth? What is truth? Now think about that. Who asked that question? Do you remember in the Bible? If you've already answered three questions, you can't answer from somebody else answering. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm. Huh? Pilate. Pilate did. Remember what he asked? He's talking to Jesus, and, and, and Jesus is telling him about truth and all that kind of stuff. He's, what is truth? And, you know, what is? Well, that's. That's it. That's the question. It's, it's the best question that you can ask. Right? What is truth? Because once you know what truth is, you know what to stake your life on. You know what to stake your eternal life on. Don't you? Well, it's mentioned. Truth is mentioned in the Bible. I'll give you a couple of things. How about this? Right at the first it says, In the beginning was uh, the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay? Now, we're going to read later that the Word is truth. The older I get, the more I believe this as truth and not much else. <laughs> I know me. I can't even believe me one day to the next. One day I'm thinking this way and the next day, well, I change my mind. Does the Bible change its mind? No. It does. It. And it says the Word, the Word was what? With God, the Word was God. Now this ink on this page is not God. But if you want to know God, this describes Him. It describes relationships. It describes who he's working with. Man, got a lot of mistakes in here, but not God didn't make them. Man, didn't God? God remembered them. He wrote them down for us so that we don't make the same mistakes, right? If we don't get truth, what do we got? If we don't get truth, what do we have? Fairy tale, manipulation. Even our own. We can manipulate ourselves. Psych ourselves up about something or this and that. We, all kind of things. And, and, and what kind of future do we have? We can decide we're saving the world if we don't use a plastic straw. We can be superheroes. Right? Because we've saved the world and kept that plastic away from whatever animal it might hurt. This Rocky Mountain spotted snail or something. Whatever it's come up with. Listen. Be good stewards of God, God created. I'm not talking about that. But there are people whose religion is saving the world. <laughs> right? Uh, by, by all kinds of things that really get to the ridiculous if you think of it. Uh, anyway, then it says, what about the Word was God? He was in the beginning with God. So when the beginning came, it wasn't Hans gum. Our two rocks hitting together. He was there. It says, all things were made through Him. Who? Well, we just sang about Him. His name is Jesus. All things were made through Did you say, wait a minute, He wasn't flesh yet. You're right, He wasn't. He's, he's God, the Son. But he's, he's that one God that we serve uh, of the three the ways that we hear about Him. But he says he's there. All things were created through him. And without him, nothing that was made was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of man. So if you want life, there's only one truth. If you're a Christian, 
that you know how it got here. It did not come from pond scum. Pond scum, by the way, is considered to be living. If it's green and it's floating in a pond, it's some sort of plant deal, right? Uh, we still haven't figured out how two things bumping together in space makes that happen. We, we don't get a bunch of what comes in those theories. They really don't match up. And the more you dig into them, the more you, you realize that they don't. don't. Don't tell those poor kids that because they think there's a lot of other super creatures in there having to do with Christmas and, 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 uh, and, and Easter and other places. You, you know what I'm saying? But we'll buy it sometimes. And if you go look at the, how it was originated, you don't get much. You get a lot about this Jesus guy. Amen? King of kings and Lord of lords. And when we find out what he's done. All right. A little further down, it tells us something that's, that's pretty important. You might have seen the, some of the t-shirts here that say technon, and it means basically adopted or becoming children. And it's got this verse on it, uh, John 1, 12, and it says, But as many as received him, he gave the right to become children of God. Wow. He gave the right. Isn't that amazing? So how do you take it away from him? If it's a right, if it's a privilege, you can take it away. Can you take away a right? Not supposed to. Not supposed to. Listen, you talked about government. That's fallible. It's made up of man. We're talking about God. When God gives a right, then it's a done deal, isn't it? He gave the right to become a what? A child of God. Part of the family of God. How do you have lower self-esteem when you're in your dad's king of kings and lord of lords? And he wants to treat you like a prince or a princess all your life? Makes you a royal ambassador from his kingdom? He expects us to act like we're from his kingdom. Right? We have a lot of us Christians that sometimes don't live like we, we belong to the family. But, but at the same time, if we take pride in who our family is, who our father is, and all that kind of stuff, it's not an issue anymore. It says, but we were not born of blood, it says, not, not like the natural way, nor the will of flesh, or the will of man, but of God. And then it says this, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have beheld His glory, and His glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and what? Truth. truth. That's the truth. I believe it. I stake my eternity on it. I, I spend my, 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 my breath on it. My, my, of everything I do in my life, the best thing I can do is tell somebody the truth. Right? It doesn't mean I don't get entertained by other things, but then you settle down and say, you know, what am I really here for? It's to do whatever I can to proclaim the truth. I don't have to protest about all the other kind of things. The world is already condemned, so what good does that do? You're kicking a dead dog. Can you teach a dead dog to jump through a flaming hoop by kicking him when he's dead? Now, you might kick him through the hoop. You have to be really good at it. But you can't make him jump through that hoop, right? And, and why, why do I get so silly with that? Well, think of it. The church going around telling the lost world is not living saved. What did we do? We kicked a dead dog. It's dead. Right? Our job is to what? Proclaim. Right? How, how to come to life and become. You can have the right to become a child of God according to Scripture, right? When you believe. Now listen. I, I noticed because I went through the, the, the book of John, looking at every place I could find that said truth. I didn't put them all in there. How many of you are excited? I didn't hear a single amen. Okay? But, but along with truth, there's belief and unbelief. As you go through there, belief and unbelief. Right? John 3.16 says what? For God so loved the world, He, only, he gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever what? Believeth in Him wouldn't perish but have everlasting life. Well, if you believe in Him, He gave His only Son then that's pretty easy. But if you don't believe it, you missed it. You missed the truth. We'll go believe in this rock and this pond scum stuff, but we won't believe in the one that made us and died for us in spite of us. Knowing us, He still did it. What are you talking about? Grace? Amen? He did those things. And so, He's full of truth. So if you want to see truth, that, that's a good place to look. There's... So much more in here, and, and I'm probably not even going to cover all that, that I've got about it. Uh, here, here's another place of, of truth. One, it says, you are truly, and in other words, it's the truth, we're not playing. 
My disciples, if you remain faithful to my teachings, if you trust what I'm telling you, then you're living the truth, and, and everybody will know that you belong to me. You're, that is truly, it's not a fake deal that we're not playing church. Okay? How about this one? I tell you the truth, not that Jesus would lie. Everyone who sins is a slave of sin. If we live to sin, we, we sometimes call them addictions when they have to do with chemicals, don't we? Or, or some habit that, that goes in. But the tr truth is, if we let sin control us, we're a slave to it. If that's what we live to do, how much can I get away with God and still get to heaven? Do we make ourselves a servant of the Lord or a servant of how we feel for the moment? What did we do? So, more truth that it talks about. One more time. Who is sin? I mean, excuse me. Who is truth? Jesus blatantly says it right here. Look what He says. Jesus says, I am the way. How do you live forever? Jesus. I am the truth. If you want to know what absolute truth is, it's Jesus. Agree? And no one comes to the Father except by me. We just studied this last week about the Tower of Babel. And they said, we're making it high enough to reach heaven. That's what they, they said. Nimrod and his bunch said over in, in, in Babylon. The, the place of Babylon. The, the Babylonian Tower and all that kind of stuff. How many of y'all have heard of that thing before? That they're making it that big. And it's so funny. One of the next verses, God says, let's go down and see what they're doing. In other words, they're making it big enough to reach heaven, but God can't even see it from there. He's got to go down and look at it. It's almost being ridiculing them just by saying that. Now, God doesn't need to go down and see everything everywhere. But they're going to make their own way to heaven. How well does that work out? Do you know other people that make their own way to heaven? We'll save the earth. Don't use them plastic straws. Isn't that a way to be as good as anybody? Or whatever other concept or whatever we devote our life to? Now, listen, all of them aren't bad. Like I said, good stewardship is fine. Helping the downtrodden is fine. But when you make it, you're the hero. And so you deserve, God has to let you in. <laughs> that doesn't really work well. There's one way to heaven. His name is what? Well, he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except by me. So here's our problem. Absolute truth. Who believes in it? If you're a Christian, you're saying that you believe in absolute truth. But if you're a Christian and you say, I believe in relative truth. Yeah, God means that for if you're over here, but over here you can live that way. Right? Does that work? Or in this place I can, in that place I can, etc., etc. Or parts of the Bible is truth and other parts we're not so sure about. Now listen, one more time. In its original writing, it was absolutely true. It's been translated... Wonderfully, though, the novice can go back on the internet to an interlinear Bible and see what it said in the original language. You can check out your English version and see. So there are ways that you can check, and you don't have to be a, a super sleuth to find it. Okay? The, the problem gets in, though, with what we do with it. What we do with it. We have churches who are deciding that, well, not all of the Bible we need to depend on. Or oh, that was for back then, but it's, it's not for now. One more time, if we went to the, the Constitution of the United States, we said, they, that's what they meant back then, but now, we live different now, so we don't have to worry about it anymore. What happens? What did you just do to, to that document? And you shredded it. Okay? And what do we do with the Bible when we say, well, God, you know, He wasn't smart enough to know what was going to happen in the future. You know? That, that's the kind of thing that happens. And so we have... No denomination will get you to heaven. Let me go ahead and tell you that. How many are disappointed? No denomination will get you to heaven. Only Jesus will get you to heaven. We go to our denominations over a culture of worship, how we choose to worship, uh, things that we say, you're leaving that one out. We want to really emphasize that for ourselves, not to put you down. Or they emphasize something else. We say, I don't see it that way. But, but it doesn't mean that you disagree that it's true. It's just they're emphasizing different things and, and that kind of stuff. Others like freedom. One guy told me one time, well, I used to be Baptist, but uh, I can go to this one now and I can drink all the beer I want and I feel bad about it. 
Yeah. Is that the, that's not the reason to swap denominations. If the Holy Spirit calls you somewhere or over there, that's between you and the Holy Spirit. I haven't heard him use the Holy Spirit, <laughs> that, that particular one yet. You know, but when people, believe it or not, do people swap churches over such things? Right. Yeah, what can I get away with and still get to heaven? By the way, that's not what sends you to hell, not having Jesus sends you to hell. Amen? But he does give us restrictions on such things. Uh, 23 years ago, on the 7th of, I think it was the 7th of November, uh, this church, and we were a satellite of First Baptist Jennings at the time, ordained us. So I was ordained over there. And, and the, the, this church gave me a, a Bible. It was a John MacArthur study Bible. So it's got some really pretty writing in it. It's about to fall apart, but it's there. Anyway, John MacArthur did a treatment on truth. And, and I want to share with you some of these words. I'm going to explain them a little bit as we go. He's, he's really educated. I mean, really educated. And if you read his writings, you'll see that. I used to spend a lot of time in his commentary trying to figure out what he was saying. And it wasn't that he was wrong. It was just sometimes it's kind of hard to understand. Kind of like Peter said about Paul. Said some of his writings are a little technical, you know. Anyway, now let's go through some of this. It, it's right at the end of his treatment. He wrote in 2008. He says, truth is not subjective. What's subjective? From my point of view. Truth is absolute is what he's saying. It's not how I feel about it today. Okay? So truth is not subjective. This isn't scripture, by the way. This is a commentary on truth. Just listen to it and see, see what we learn. It, it's not a consensual cultural contract. Well, God gave it, but now we need to go to see if we really like it for our culture. He said, that's, that's not it. Absolute truth is that the man gives God consent to have his rules or his standards. It doesn't work that way. So it's not consensual by man. And it's not just a cultural thing. And it is not an invalid, outdated, irrelevant concept. God's truth, Jesus, by the way, the truth, is not a what? An invalid, outdated, or irrelevant concept. Truth is the self-expression of God. God's Word is Him expressing, revealing Himself to us. Okay? He, he did a great job in, in putting these things here. Truth is thus theological. Uh, if you say evolution is science, it's not science if it's a theory. You're trying to make it science by proving it, but if it's still a theory, then it's not science yet. It's not a proven fact, right? Does that make sense? And if you're going to get to absolute truth, it's going to be from God. All the rest of us are guessing, floundering around, trying to figure out how this works and all those other kind of things go. That's why doctors practice medicine. Right? Have they got it all figured out yet? No? It, it's, a, it, it, it's kind of an art form. Who, who's better at it in, in different ways? Let's keep going. Thus, truth is just theological. It is the reality God has created and defined and over which He rules. Truth is therefore a moral issue for every human being. The standards of God, right, is our choice to receive or to say no to. If we believe Him, what will we say? Yes. yes. If we don't believe Him, the truth, what will we say? No. Who cares? How much of our society would you say today, who cares? And don't you tell me a standard that I need to go by. I like what makes me feel good. I like what I've decided works. We said this morning, Eve looked at that, that fruit and said, look good to her for food. She argued about it for a little while, but she, looked, she saw it was good for food. What'd she do based on her evaluation? Now, what had God already said? Don't eat. Then, of course, Adam came along. Eve didn't drop dead. He, he, he must have evaluated that. He thought it was good for food too. Whose opinion did he follow? His own. So we say, we don't believe you, God. We don't believe in truth that way when we, we throw away his, his moral standards. How each person responds to truth God has revealed is an issue of eternal significance. To reject and to rebel against the truth in darkness it uh, results in darkness, folly, sin, judgment, and the never-ending wrath of God. To accept and submit to the truth is to see clearly and to know with certainty and to find the everlasting. Okay? Now, what happens when everybody does his or her own thing? <coughs> Chaos. Confusion. We don't know what good is and what bad is. We don't know who the good guys are and who the bad guys are. 
Anybody turn on the news lately? Who's the good guys? If you, if you look at the news, who's the good guy? The bad guy. Criminals. <laughs> I'm not going to get into the whole debate, but they're often portrayed as victims. And who are the victimizers? Those who went to stop them from committing crimes. So they're the evil and this is the good now. It's topsy-turvy. Have you noticed that going on these days? Why? Because what have we done? We've taken, well, the truth out. And what we learn here is God is the ultimate truth. Would you agree? We've taken God out. And we try to fix it by the same way it got broken. We don't look to the truth. We look to our own devices to get it fixed. Right? We have different ways. We're going to fix this. We're going to go do this and that. And all the protests that goes on and this goes on and it goes on. And, and, and all those things. Instead of turning to God. Let's see. God says, uh, if my people will get mad and fuss at each other and, and beat each other with signs and all that kind of stuff, then I'll hear from heaven and come and, and, and heal their land. Is that what it said? It doesn't say it that way? No, it doesn't. That's not the truth, by the way. What does it say? If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. Hum, hum, humble who? Their neighbor? It didn't say humble your neighbor. It said humble who? Ourself. And pray and seek my face. How many of us do things that we don't want God watching? Yeah. Right? As opposed to saying, like those little dribblers, look, mom, look what I'm doing. You know, those two dribbles they got in a row. <laughs> Great stuff, right? But, but do we do that when we're doing the wrong thing? Look what I'm doing and with pride and all that. Seek my face, right? Then what would he do? I'll hear from heaven. Right? And I'll heal the land, it says. So when we ignore the truth or we try another lie to fix another lie, <laughs> right? And, and we, we ignore that truth comes from God. It's the only absolute source of truth, the only absolute source of truth, if we believe in God and everything that the Bible says, then it, it comes to a different spot. What does he say about such things? John chapter 17. Jesus is praying for the guys he's fixing to leave behind. And he says, Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is what? Truth. Goodness. If only we knew where to find his word. If, if only, by the way, if I put that in my house in a prominent place, then we've been sanctified, right? Because it's in my house in a prominent place. Coffee tables used to be popular. There, there's often one there. A mantle was a nice place to put one. Right? Will that sanctify your house? If a vampire comes in, just grab it and across it, and they'll run, right? Except for vampires aren't real. So you're prepared. <laughs> and, and, and by the way, I don't think they'd run anyway. I think they would do like the demons did when they went and somebody claimed that they had the power from God. And he said, Paul, I know, and Jesus, I know, I don't know who you are. And then the guys got beat up and left naked, it said. Don't try to picture it. Just know that it says it in the Bible. Okay? That's what happens when we play church. What, what do we have to do with this thing for it to have an effect on us? Another place it says, and I'm not going to turn to it now, it says you can know the truth and the truth can set you free. Free from what? Free to do anything you want? Well, then you miss the truth. <laughs> Amen. We spoke about that this morning. Why do we choose after we're saved to seek to do things that, that meet God's standards as opposed to our natural desires? Why do we choose to do that? He says, if you love me, you'll what? Obey me. They asked me whenever Sherry and I got married, will you, with this ring out of your way now, will you wear it? as a, 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 a token of, of this relationship with you and, and your wife? And I said, I will. Well, what's, what's the token of our relationship between us and our Lord Jesus? If He's Lord, and we want to show people we belong to Him, how are we going to do it? Get this thing out in the middle of the mantle or the, or the coffee table? That'll show everybody, right? Is that what we'll do? No. What we'll do it? Let me give you an example. How about battling ourselves? 
I want to do this, but for His sake and for His witness and because I love Him, I'm not going to do that. Anybody married? One or two? Okay. How many times do you say, I would do this. It could be anything from a fishing trip, a hunting trip, buying a new guitar. It could be any of those things. I'm not talking about anybody in particular. Right? But it might affect my relationship. It might affect my family. It might affect this. It might affect that. And all that kind of stuff. So because of that, I'll say no to my what? Self. Self and, and desires. Human desires that really don't mean anything in the long range of things, does it? Another token, of another moment, as opposed to someone who I love for eternity or someone who I love throughout this lifetime. Right? So what's our token that shows that we belong to Jesus? It's what? It's obedience. I take His standards. Do I live them perfectly? Absolutely not. Is that okay? Absolutely not. <laughs> So when somebody says, well, you're a hypocrite because you could live up to those standards and, and you, you say that those are the correct standards. Well, they are the correct standards because they come from the truth, the absolute truth. Right? And I'm not going to lie about it. I want to. It's not okay when I don't. But if they see me battling, that's a token of my relationship with His. With it's a sincere battle, I don't want to live that way anymore. I don't want to act that way. I confess my sins to, to, to one another as the Bible talks about doing and say, with your help, help me not do that. We get accountability partners. Say, Man, I was thinking about this and I don't want to. Can I call you when I get weak for that? All those kind of things we, we do. Why? Because we love Jesus and we don't want to let Him down again. Does that make sense? If we believe in absolute truth. If we don't, we can take this thing and find lots of reasons not to do it God's way. All right. One more section. Does the Bible tell us about such things? Romans chapter 1, verse 18. If I wasn't reading this, I would probably be hit by whoever puts you in, in Facebook jail or Twitter jail or all that other kind of stuff, maybe even get busted by certain federal governments that, that, that says, you're talking hate, but I'm just going to read it, okay? And, and see what this says. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness, that's people living outside the truth, and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Suppress means they've got it, and they say what? We don't want to fool with this. Don't let that up. <laughs> right? That, that, that's what suppressing means. Because what may be known of God is manifest to them. In other words, it shows you. If you want to know something about God, He says, I'm showing it to you. For God has shown it to them. Manifest means it shows up. You know, Casper, the friendly ghost, y'all remember him? Somebody does? Okay. Uh, Casper could, could be that little white thing going across the screen or they might just show his eyes <laughs> so you knew where he was but he could either be invisible or he could be visible right well when a ghost shows itself according to that fiction then it manifested itself when it went invisible it wasn't manifested so manifest means to show God has manifested them God has shown it to them so God has shown us plenty of evidence that he is and he's the truth for since, verse 20, for since the creation of the world, His invisible attributes are clearly seen. His invisible, the goodness of God, are clearly seen. The things that He is and He has done. Being understood by the things that are made. What all did God make? Don't refer back to third grade science. What all did God make according to Scripture? Everything. everything. The, the, the heavens, the earth, everything in between, right? Okay. Uh, being understood by the things He made. Even His eternal power and Godhead, so that you are, they are without excuse. God has shown His full self. For example, God's in heaven, the Son, the Creator, the Holy Spirit dwells within you. Right? All, all of those things are there and He's shown that. And so He says there's no excuse. Nobody says, well, I was ignorant. Well, suppressing the truth will keep you ignorant and me ignorant. Putting it down and not letting it out. Okay? Because although they knew God, they didn't glorify Him. How many of y'all know people that know about God, but they're not going to live a life to show it? Maybe later, when we're not so busy, when, when time shows down and all that kind of stuff. Okay? They, they, they didn't glorify Him, nor were they thankful. There's a holiday coming up. 
next month. What happens when we're not thankful? When we're not thankful, we're the most happy, carefree people in the world. Is that right? No, uh, unthankful people are angry. We read this morning, irreconcilable. They're always mad. They didn't get what they thought they deserved and all. Anyway, but became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened. Why are their hearts foolish? They don't know the truth. They're acting on something else. They were fools. They bought another truth that wasn't the same. Professing to be wise, they became fools. Have you ever listened to some of them people on TV? They know lots of 50 cent words. It's probably a dollar and a half now, inflation. Right? But they know a lot of those words. And they can talk your head off. Right? And all that kind of stuff. But they're talking about nonsense. Because it doesn't last what they're talking about. How many of y'all know that the earth is going to be not be here in 12 years? Have y'all heard that? 12 more years. If, if things don't change, we're not going to be here anymore. You know how long I've been here in 12 years? Longer than 12 years. But I heard it the other day again. 12 more years. Now why do they always project to the future? Because you don't know if it's going to come true or not. But we never reach the 12 years, is what I'm saying. And, and so it becomes foolish to, to listen at them talk after you've heard the cycle before many, many times. All right? And change the glory of the incorruptible God into the image of corruptible man. We take God and we make Him like man. God is incorruptible. Man, we're, we're fickle this side of heaven. Right? He said that's what we do with God. Said the birds and the uh, the four footed animals and creepy things. We start worshiping natural things instead of the supernatural. All, it, it, it's coming. This one comes hereafter. Therefore, God gave them up. When God, man said they had the fullness of God, they had the evidence of God, they had all that kind of stuff. He said he gave them up. You want to go your, live your way? You get your choice. Go ahead. And by the way, did you know that everybody has the right to be wrong? Anybody ever been wrong before? Yeah, we were wrong many times. But one thing I'm right about is our Lord Jesus. Right? And that's the one thing. Okay? So, gave them up to their uncleanness in the lust of their hearts. What does the Bible say about the heart? Remember? The heart is deceptive. Right? Lean not to your own understanding. Don't, don't, don't fall for that. How many of y'all have heard? We heard a pageant the other night at the homecoming. And, and, and the most important thing that I knew was somebody said, follow your own heart. Is that what the Bible teaches? Is that the truth of the Bible? It says, don't. Your heart is natural. It can't see the end. It just follows what feels good to you for the moment. Be careful. Follow the heart of God. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all the things you need are going to be added, it says. Right? Anyway, the lust of their heart, that means illicit desires of their heart, to dishonor their bodies, who exchange the truth of God for a lie, a substitute truth. Not what God says, but what the world says, a substitute truth, and there's a bunch of them out there. And worshiped and served the creature, the natural, the things God made, rather than the Creator who is blessed. For this reason, God gave them up to that. You want to have that? You can have it. You choose that over the eternal life I've got for you? He didn't stop us. And it says, For even their women exchanged natural use for what is against nature. What's it talking about? Well, it tells you in the next one. Likewise, also the men, leaving their natural use of the, the woman and burned with lust for one another. So that's same-sex relationships, both of those. He says that's outside. He says that's what they did. They went away from God and He turned them over to them. Okay? Now, it, please, please, don't center on one sin and skip all the rest of them. And he's going to list them as, as we read through. Not, not much further. Uh, men with men committing what is shameful. Now, is that what the world says? It's, it's shameful? Don't you dare. That's hate speech. It's brave and it's wonderful according to TV. Isn't that what TV says? Okay. What does the Bible say? Which truth are we going to believe? Now again, this is not condemning sin is sin is sin is sin. And I need a Savior just like they need a Savior. Amen? But, but just know what the Bible says about it. What is shameful in receiving in themselves the penalty of the error which is due. And even as they did 
not like to retain God in their knowledge, a lot of folks will push Him out. Because they, remember, not seeking His face, but look the other way, God. God gave them over to a debased mind to do the things which are not fitting. So, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality. Which kind of sexual immorality? Heterosexual or homosexual? Oh. Yes, both. Sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, malice, malice, maliciousness, excuse me, uh, having malice, wanting to hurt someone, uh, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil mindedness, whisperers. Boy, right up there with all that other stuff. Whisperers. That's gossiping, isn't it? Okay. Backbiting. Haters of God. Violent pride. Proud boasters. Inventors of evil things. It seems like in the past ten years they've come up with new things I never dreamed of. Uh, 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 going against God and His, his uh, moral standards. Disobedient to parents. The people that love you and want the best for you. And they say, no, we don't, we're not into that. Okay. Undiscerning. Not looking at it from, from God's point of view, but just following along. Untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving. Who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve those who practice them. You want a, hard, a tough spot, Christians? Here you are. You're called to go out and share the good news with other sinners who haven't come to reach, know Jesus yet. You're called to hold the standard without hating the sin. But not to approve the sin. Isn't that what it said? To, to, it says, don't be an approver of the sin that's going up. That's what it says. Okay, that's what the Bible says. Now, which part of the Bible are we going to believe? It has to be all of it or none of it. Right? It, it has to be there. But listen, if your idea is I'm going to go stone some sinners, you miss what I taught today. Our job is to go and proclaim to sinners there's a way out, right? The truth will set you free from being a slave to your own desires. Doesn't mean it's going to be easy. In fact, I suggest, in fact, I'll even go from the Bible. Get you a support group. A church that will not appease, not enable, but love you and invest their life with you to help you move from it as we try to do for each other as we go. Who is the way, the truth, and the life? Who is the only one who can get us to the Father in heaven? Okay, It's Jesus. That's it. How do we show our love for Him? We quit living the way we did when we didn't see Him as truth. And we quit apologizing for Him as He presents His truth. But we lovingly reach out to those who are not under His truth yet. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, the Bible says you can't do it unless He's called you. And so if you're feeling His pull on you, don't wait. Don't quench the Spirit, the God, the Holy Spirit, as He's doing it. By the way, another name for the Spirit is the Spirit of truth. Did you know that? And said He will lead you to all truth. Well, who is all truth? Jesus. The way, the truth, and the life. So don't wait for that. If you are a Christian, we're not moralists. We're people who see what? Others who are not saved by the way they're living and acting, and we love them enough to figure out a way that we can show them the truth, proclaim the truth to them. And we'll let God take it from there. Amen? Let's, let's go to the Let's stand.